everything you need to know about going solar in Tasmania. My name's Finn Peacock, Chartered Electrical Engineer, founder of Solar Quotes. My annual Solar 101 Beginner's Guide has helped well over 100,000 Aussies go solar with confidence and enjoy the security of tiny bills for the foreseeable future. And now, after a recent Tasmanian trip, it's clear to me that Tasmania needs its own video to cover the unique aspects of going solar in Tasmania. Think of this as an appendix to my main Solar 101 video. Let's get to it. Point one, an overview of the pros and cons of solar in Tasmania. Now I'm gonna start with the bad news. <laughs> if you're thinking of going solar in Tasmania, you have got a few things stacked against you. The Tasmanian solar rebate is lower than most parts of the mainland. Your solar generation is the lowest of any state, especially in winter. And as a double whammy, winter energy use is higher than other states. That means solar will struggle to offset your winter usage. And finally, extra freight and regulations make the typical Tasmanian solar system more expensive than one on the mainland. Now that's a pretty gloomy picture, but despite this, a 6.6 kilowatt solar system, that's around 18 panels, which is the typical system size installed these days, can pay for itself in under five years in Tasmania. Try getting that kind of return from the bank. To make things more positive, there are a few things you have got going for you in Tasmania. The average quality of a solar install is actually the highest in the country, and that's due to your excellent 100% inspection regime that's run by the Department of Justice. The amount of solar TAS networks allows you to put on per phase is also higher than virtually anywhere else in the country. East facing panels in Tasmania produce more energy overall than in other parts of the country. And that combos well with morning home heating needs. Let's go into more detail on these. Point two, solar rebates in Tasmania. As I explain in my main solar 101 video, the solar rebate is technically known as the STC scheme and its value is directly correlated to the size of a solar system in kilowatts. The rebate is also calculated on what zone you are in, where zone one has the highest rebate and zone four has the lowest. As you can see from this map, being in Tassie puts you squarely in zone four, sorry. To put things into perspective, a typical 6.6 .6 kilowatt solar system in zone three, where most Aussies live, attracts around about three and a half grand in rebates. In zone four, this same 6.6 .6 kilowatt system only attracts three grand in rebates. So this lower rebate in Tasmania adds about $500 to the cost of a system compared to the sunnier parts of Australia. Point three, winter generation and energy use habits. Solar systems produce more energy in the summer and less in winter, kind of obvious, yeah? This chart shows the typical monthly generation of a north facing 6.6 .6 kilowatt system in Hobart. Now let's compare that to a north facing 6.6 .6 kilowatt system in Sydney. You can see that the drop in energy generation during the winter months is much more dramatic in Hobart. Which takes us to point four, how panel direction affects Tasmanian solar production. Like the rest of the country, north facing panels will generate the most energy annually in Tasmania. But unlike most other parts of the country, where east or west facing panels generate roughly the same amount of energy, Tassie's location means that east facing panels generate a bit more than west facing ones. In Hobart, east facing panels will generate 90% of what north facing panels would, but west facing panels will only generate 80%. When you combine this east facing extra generation with Tasmania's cold mornings, when you're more likely to be using more energy to heat your home when you wake up, this means it can be better to put panels on an east facing roof if you have one. Unless, of course, your energy usage habits skew more towards the afternoon. Point five, the costs of solar in Tasmania. If you avoid the cheaper mobs who advertise hard on the telly and in the paper, approximate costs for a good quality 6.6 .6 kilowatt install done by a reputable local installer are Good budget panels with a good budget inverter, five and a half to six and a half grand. Good budget panels with a premium inverter, six to seven and a half grand. Premium panels with a premium inverter, seven to nine grand. Ultra premium panels with premium inverter, we're talking the Maserati of solar, eight to 11 grand. 
Now, these prices do not include site-specific costs, such as optimizers, engineering costs, scissor lifts, etc, etc. I'll also note that these prices are higher than the rest of Australia, and that's for four reasons. One, you get less solar rebate, as we talked about. Two, Tasmania is a small market, and a small market plus a water gap means your freight costs are higher. And then mandatory inspections add to the cost too. But mandatory inspections also keep a lot of the shonks out. There are many less than reputable companies operating on the mainland that either steer clear of Tasmania altogether or actually pull up their socks and install systems to a good standard when they cross the Bass Strait. But a word of warning, these cheaper operators have been known to quote you a great price on a system only to bump it up by a couple of grand when they rock up to install and realize they'll need to spend more time on the system to be able to pass inspection. If you've already paid the deposit and they're at your house ready to go, they're hoping your sunk cost will make you likely to cough up an extra couple of grand instead of giving up and starting from scratch. Point six, solar systems and exports can be large in Tasmania. In virtually every other state, the maximum amount of solar you can easily install on a single phase home is a five kilowatt inverter with 6.6 .6 kilowatts of panels. Some states, like SA, can allow up to 10 kilowatts of inverter capacity and 13.3 kilowatts of solar on a single phase, but they're export limited. You can't export more than five kilowatts at any time, that can hurt your payback. But in Tasmania, you're allowed to install a huge 13.3 kilowatt system on a single phase without any export limits at all. So if you have the roof space and the budget, my advice is put on as much solar as you can fit and afford. With the caveat that if the solar panels cover an area greater than 38 square meters on any one roofing structure, then council approval and engineering certification are required. That's gonna add 700 to $1,200 in costs. Tilt frames if you need them, will also attract this extra cost of council and engineering certification. Point seven, feed-in tariffs. Up until February 2019, Tasmanians only had one choice for their energy retailer, Aurora Energy. Since then, three new retailers have been allowed to operate. First Energy, Energy Locals, and Future X Energy. Of the four, First Energy is paying the best feed-in tariff. They're paying 13.47 cents per kilowatt hour compared to around eight and a half cents from the other three. So, if your goal is to get your bill as low as possible with solar, First Energy seems to be the best retailer for now. Point eight, electricity tariffs and shifting loads. When you put a solar system on in Tasmania, you're automatically put onto tariff 93, which is a time of use tariff. This tariff charges a peak rate in the morning and evening and an off peak rate at other times. You can switch from tariff 93 back to other standard tariffs, but we've run the numbers. And at the time of filming, tariff 93 is actually the best bet for the typical Tasmanian solar owner who wants to save the most money overall. I will point out that on time of use tariff 93, it's really important to prevent your hot water system from switching on during those peak periods. A simple timer or more expensive, but more intelligent relay or diverter will help with this. Point nine, batteries don't pay for themselves unless you're going off grid. At the time of filming, on-grid solar batteries just don't pay for themselves anywhere in Australia. But it's becoming more common for Tasmanians to buy their dream block ready to build that dream home. But the cost to bring grid power to that remote dream block with those stunning views can easily be a hundred grand or more. How does that compare to the cost of an off-grid solar system? Well, it depends on what kind of lifestyle you want to live. But as a rough guide, the kind of system needed to run an energy efficient, modestly sized home will cost around thirty dollars to $40,000. A larger system that can run more creature comforts will cost closer to $70,000 plus. So this means that even large off-grid systems in Tasmania can be cheaper than connecting to the grid in remote areas. Point 10. How long will it take for solar to pay for itself in Tassie? I'll use my nifty solar calculator, which I've linked to in the description to answer this question quickly. Assuming a 6.6 .6 kilowatt solar system facing northeast costing $7,000, an unshaded roof, a house on tariff 93 with the average cost of electricity being 25 cents per kilowatt hour, First Energy as the retailer with their generous 13.47 cent feed-in tariff, 
and I'm assuming solar cell consumption is 30%. My calculator shows that you'll save just under $1,400 a year. So a simple payback period of just under five years. Now, if you can think of a better investment, I'd love to hear about it. So there you have it, Solar 101 Tasmanian Edition. I hope you found it useful. If you're in Tasmania and looking to get quotes for solar from reputable installers that I have personally vetted, just go to my website, solarquotes.com.au. Pop your postcode into the top right box, fill in the form, and I'll do my absolute best to connect you with up to three installers that I trust. Thanks for watching, Tasmania.